What is that sound? Hi, thanks for joining me in my shop here this morning. I'm going to be working on this radio and probably changing a whack of capacitors. What is that sound? That sound is one of the cooling fans on my computer that I'm using to make this video with. Which normally, when I first start up my computer, makes that sound sh for a short while and then it stops. But it's not stopping anymore. So I apologize for it until I get around to trying to fix that. We'll have to put up with it. It'll probably stop in a minute or two. So um, it's another beautiful day outside. That's why I'm having trouble coming in here to do work because the weather outside is fantastic. And I don't want to spend time indoors when the sun is shining. So I would like to get some of these capacitors changed though. There's quite a few in here. One, somebody's already changed. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just six of them. Okay, of these ones, they all have the size written on them. So uh, without even studying the schematic, I'm going to start re uh, replacing these because I'm in a bit of a rush. And plus we have we have this guy here. Which, uh, although this radio is not humming. Oh, these wires are quite stiff. Yeah, this is probably pretty darn old itself. I will change out this. Looks like this power cord is probably a change out also someone else so okay snap that back in there for now I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it in the circuit for now concentrate on these capacitors I'll leave this one in there too nice orange drop from some time ago okay I'm gonna do the replacements off camera also to try to speed this along as quickly as I can Well, I've done what I always say should never be done. I have shotgunned the capacitors out of this radio without testing the radio along the way. And that can lead to a disastrous situation if I've made a mistake. Did I make a mistake in there? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I made a mistake. I'm pretty sure I didn't make a mistake. I'm just cutting off a tail here. There. Just a quick look. Okay. We're going to try this radio out. Now, once again, after having done this work, I wouldn't just plug this in an outlet and let it rip. I'm going to use the dim bulb approach here. Hey, you know what we should do first? Why don't we test these capacitors? Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like just a barrel of monkeys of fun doing that. Here we go. Did I say it's another beautiful day here? Yes, it is. So the city I live in, Aurelia, is uh, considered one of the sunniest places in Canada. And there's lots of sunshine in Canada. And it certainly seems to work out that way. There is lots of sunshine here in Aurelia. So we will see. Mr. El Nino is going to be affecting the weather across North America soon, so maybe maybe things will change. Let me douse some lights here. Okay, you can see the pie opening down here around the 50 volt. This is set properly. Okay, we're just going to run through the bundle of capacitors that are here that I've changed. Here we go. So, partly open at 50. That's not terrible. That's not terrible. Now, it depends again where in the radio it is operating. This particular one, I remember, this one here is uh, coming back from the volume control. So, this is carrying the audio to the first audio amp. Here we go. Opened up pretty good, eh? 150 volts. Not so good there. So nothing surprising in any of these so far. This is typical of uh, typical of cap capacitors in these old radios. Um, so what I'd be interested in finding is one that is open or uh, shorted. Now that, that would be quite a find. I don't think there is such a thing. This is shaky here. Again, 
not so bad. I bet you at 150. Can't do it. So good capacitor, it could easily put full voltage, which might be 400 or 600 volts, right across it. Then on this instrument, the eye would stay open. It would close briefly and then pop open all the way. Here we go. 50 volts. What do you say? It's just open a little wee bit. All very similar in condition. I have tested many, many capacitors on this machine, so I've become quite comfortable with what to expect. And here we go, 50. Look at that one open up. 150. This guy's testing really good. What's special about him? What's his rating here? 600 volts. Okay, let's go. 250. Oh my gosh. 350. This is like new. There's something unusual going on here. It's opening up the same way every time, even though I'm hitting it with a heavier charge. Well, I don't know. This is, this is interesting. This looks a little different than the other capacitors. I'm going to put that guy right here. That's a special area. We'll see if there's something special, a different manufacturer or something about it. Sets it apart from the rest. This guy might have some voltage on it. Here we go. That's good. Pretty good. That's not so good. Okay, so, you know, I've seen radios with much worse capacitors than these, and I've seen them with better. So, there you go. Now, what is different about this? Let's go over here. This one's made by Aerovox. You see a billion of these capacitors around. This one's made by... Made in, <laughs> can't read it here. Made in England. It's TCC, the English capacitor. Now, what about this one? Aerobox. Where was it made? Made in Canada. Oh my gosh. Well, there you go. British capacitor. Superior. <laughs> I don't know if that's really true or not. Okay. Good show. Now it's time to try this radio out. Let's just back up a little bit. And I think we're okay here. No, turn off the soldering iron. I don't need that running. I have another soldering iron that issues a huge amount of interference when it's operating. Which I used to have in the shop here, which I don't anymore. But that, that soldering iron I use does not seem to issue any interference. That's the speaker connections. Switch is off. Okay, so we're going to apply power through the dim bulbs. And I'm going to take one bulb out of the circuit. So it's just one bulb. You ready? Okay, I'm going to flip it on. Light should come on bright and dull down quickly. That's the objective. That's kind of how my life has gone. It came on bright but dulled down quickly. Here we go. Came on bright. dulling down so quickly, but then there's just one bulb, so there's a lot of restriction of current. Okay, I'm going to screw in the other bulb because clearly there's not a short circuit in here. Pretty quiet. Why so quiet?
Bingo. Never shotgun your capacitors unless you're in a terrible rush. It's exactly what you're rushing for, I don't know about. Okay, French station. I think so. Okay. What's, what's the popping? Didn't I saw? Uh oh, didn't I solder it? Again? Maybe I didn't solder something. Five ninety. What's, what's the loose here? Even got to full voltage. Only we got close to full voltage on it. Now, did I? Did I? Oh, look at that! That was the problem right there. Loose knob. No, no, I, I'm the loose knob. Did I not solder everything? You know, I did not double check everything. Uh oh, I didn't double do the didn't do the double check. soldered in. What was telling me? Uh, no, there's no hum coming with this capacitor in there. Well, I don't know what that was. It could have been nothing. It could have been nothing of concern. Okay. Well, that's it for today. That's all I'm doing today because, once again, the sun is... Uh, shining outside. Want to see? Want to see the beautiful sun? Let's see if I get my camera up here. I usually camera can't do it. Yeah, you can see there's sunshine out there. And there's also a yard full of weeds and grass. And, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fantastic, I think. So, um, what's left to do on this uh, radio is an alignment, basically, and it's done. That's all. That's for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this quick uh, video.